Right now we're taking a look at an awesome representation of that atmospheric river that we've been talking about. Really what it is is a strong Pacific jet and we can actually see that on screen impacting states like California and Nevada. It literally looks like a river so it's easy to see why that name is appropriate in this case. This is just moisture, storms, snowfall for the Sierra Nevada and Rockies. This is the source of all of that precipitation that we expect out west. And look at this. I mean, we really do expect a whole lot for California. But even areas further north like Oregon and Washington are definitely going to cash in on quite a bit of that precipitation. And even inland like Nevada, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, down through New Mexico, we're all expecting inches of precipitation and even upwards of five or six inches of precipitation for California. Now, even more shocking is that the Sierra Nevada expects those higher amounts, you know, in, in upwards of three, four, five, six inches of precipitation. And that is going to fall in the form of snowfall, which typically falls at, you know, 10 to 1 ratio or more, aka, you know, five inches of precipitation would equal a whole lot of snowfall. We're talking about, you know, 50 inches plus, but ratios will probably be even more juice than that. So let's take a look at that total snowfall real quickly. And we're expecting tons of snowfall feet for the Sierra Nevada. That's no surprise, of course, as we're expecting a ton of precipitation. Even the Rockies, I mean, we can see states like Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, and uh, down through Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. These states are also expecting two, three, four, five, six feet of snowfall potentially for those mountaintop locations. So ski resorts are rejoicing with this upcoming snowfall. And you can see it's pretty widespread uh, throughout the entire western area overall. Unless you're in a very low elevation area or a coastal region, you are expecting tons and tons of snowfall. Let's go ahead and talk about the east real quickly and then we're going to break down what we typically go over, I assure you. Uh, but we can see that areas in the east, we're talking mostly the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, up through the northeast. They're going to be drier for the next few days. But what we're taking a look at here is about the 15th through the 19th of February. And that is the time frame that we are eyeballing for the precipitation to return to those areas. And we could see upwards of half an inch to an inch for most areas within those regions that I mentioned. So this is definitely good news if you're hoping for precipitation, if you're hoping for snowfall, things of that nature are definitely going to become a lot more common here as we reach into those time frame so let's go ahead and walk through things we're just going to go day by day here of course starting today on saturday february 3rd and what we're already seeing is a storm system along this atmospheric river mostly snowfall here for the rockies idaho montana wyoming utah colorado even down through new mexico and even thunderstorms and showers here on the eastern end this is going to be for states like texas louisiana arkansas oklahoma kansas and nebraska that's all the activity that we have going on right now but i want to note the jet stream is mostly doing something like this so a massive ridge across the central states we have a trough here for the west and a very mini i would call it trough here for the northeast but the central states that warmth that humidity is surging northward this is expected to change by the midpoint of the month and even the climate prediction center is on board with that by the way i could put that on screen where their three to four week outlook is showing cold in the east warm in the west that is certainly the expectation not only for me as you know a lot of you you know seem to think but uh, also from the people over at noaa that is the current expectation from them as well uh, now we see storm number two from this atmosphere River already coming on shore by the time we're reaching tomorrow on Sunday the 4th. This is bringing heavy snowfall for the mountainous areas of California and bringing a lot of rainfall for those lower elevation areas and also uh, the coastal regions there in California where flooding is a big time concern. Also landslides are also concerned when you see that high amount of precipitation. By Monday on the 5th here we still have tons of precipitation both in the form of a rainfall and snowfall for those areas. We also have a bit of a low pressure system impacting the southeast here. States like Florida, Georgia, South Carolina getting some showers and thunderstorms from that as things are looking more and more spring-like obviously as we're approaching uh, the month of March. I know we're not even close yet but we are on the upswing as we noted yesterday where things are looking more and more spring-like every single week. We expect more conditions like that to prevail for especially the further south areas here in the deep south of the states. 
Now, as we take a look here at the West by Tuesday on the 6th, we still have tons of snowfall. We still have tons of rainfall going on. Definitely a very, very impactful situation, both on the front of snowfall with those major, major amounts that we talked about earlier. But not only that, the flooding concern for the lower elevation and low, well, low lying areas, which is the same thing, but also the coastal areas. Let's go ahead and move forward. We're going to take it towards the 7th here. And as we reach the seventh time frame, we have more storminess, no surprise, with that atmospheric river prevailing out west. We have 1,003 up here for Washington and Oregon. We have a 993 here in eastern Colorado. So definitely some stronger low pressure systems and broad low pressure throughout the entire area, which is leading to this very widespread precipitation throughout the entire western third of the nation. But again, the jet stream is still troughing over the west. Major ridge in the central states even encompass a lot of the east at this point so a lot of warmth is surging out here and a lot of cold air is diving out west again this is the opposite of what we expect once we reach the midpoint of the month which we're not going to get to on this model run but we will take a look at a model in a minute that does show that thursday february 8th and what we're seeing by this point is still precipitation out west but now it's even stretching uh, from this area into the central states and a lot of the plains are now seeing this as we have a 999 millibar low pressure center over kansas and a 996 over northern minnesota so certainly those two are working together to create a lot of storminess here across the central states by the time we are reaching friday here on the 9th of February, what we're seeing is that this low is now a 989, so it's actually getting stronger and it has a cold front underneath. So we're seeing thunderstorms and showers along this. Keep in mind, as we talk about those more spring-like conditions, or at least a little bit less wintry, I guess would be a better way to put it. Uh, this is going to be a common sight here. We also still have another storm out west. I mean, I shouldn't even have to mention it at this point. There's snowfall and rainfall still prevailing from basically straight from February 3rd today all the way to the 9th. We've seen consistent storminess taking place at all points, basically. As we keep going towards the 10th here, because we're getting into the extended range now, what we see is a stronger low trying to develop over Texas. We have thunderstorms and showers prevailing underneath for the deeper south, and then snowfall for the west and north of that low. This is very classic stuff for the winter time and even the late, late, late winter time like we're in right now. Sunday, February 11th, what we see is a low taking place now. It's moved from Texas and it's moved up into the Missouri, Arkansas area. Again, to the south of this low, thunderstorms are likely prevailing, especially when we have this humid warmth still surging in this area. We're getting a lot of this Gulf air now moving northward towards these areas. And we also have snowfall to the west and north of that low pressure system. And now also keep in mind that we have less storminess finally by the 11th here out west. The high pressure system is parked over these areas. And we actually have some warmth trying to settle in here for the southwest. This is going to encourage this cold to get a move on and basically head towards the east, which is fully along the lines of what we've been expecting. Uh, by the time we're reaching the 12th, this signal becomes even stronger as we have a 1,032 millibar high pressure system here over northern California. It's parked right about here. And that is causing warmth to surge and also drier conditions. And it's even further forcing this cold air to continue its trek eastward. We have a 988 millibar low pressure center near uh, Toronto, Canada there. And that is causing some snowfall for the Great Lakes and also for the northeast on the front end of this storm. Underneath likely showers and thunderstorms again prevailing here. Let's take a look at that extended look that we're going to get here on the GFS. I'm going to glance past all these storms that are coming just to show you that we're pretty much in, in line with what the European model was expecting that we just took a look at through the 11th, 12th, 13th. Uh, now, on, on the 12th here, we actually get a little bit of a different approach. We have a little bit more cold air moving into the east. This low is forced a little bit further south, and what we get is a coastal low with some snowfall for the northeast here, which is a little bit different. Warmth is surging out west, and that is going to continue to cause this cold air to basically take aim here at the east. Pretty common stuff here. Now, by the time we're reaching Tuesday, things are quieter but colder in the east. But by Wednesday, we can tell activity is about to start surging. Uh, that atmospheric river is now taking aim much further south than California. It's nowhere to be, to be seen up there. We, what we actually see is it's down here uh, for Mexico, and it's surging northward 
uh, through into the central states. And this is causing a lot of humidity, a lot of moisture, and a lot of warmth to cause this storm to really start to ramp up across the central states. Now, this is going to pay dividends down the road as this thing heads eastward. We have ample moisture just surged into that storm. 1,004 here, we see snowfall for Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, uh, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Keep in mind, this is far out, and you're going to want to take it with a grain of salt as we're now in the extended range. But again, like I said yesterday, this is our best guess at this point, of course. Warmth is continuing to surge out west, which has been the trend for days now, so I feel pretty confident about that. And then the cold is now moving into the central states and the eastern states, which is basically the exact opposite of what we saw uh, just a couple days prior to this. So definitely a big flip in the pattern by the midpoint of the month is what's expected. Again, not only by me, but also the National Weather Service and NOAA as well. Uh, we actually end up getting a pretty decent snowstorm here for the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, spreading into the mid-Atlantic and Northeast as well uh, with heavier snowfall for spots, especially in the higher elevations. We have a 991 parked over New York State, 1,002 secondary low here. Uh, well offshore of the east, and we actually have a little bit of low pressure trying to develop here south of New England. Um, we might get some of that energy to transfer there offshore, and sure enough, it does. We see a 978 millibar low pressure center offshore of Maine, and this causes very heavy snowfall for the northeast due to this storm after the 15th. But look at the overall jet stream pattern, a massive ridge out west, and this really, really potent cold air parked over the east, which is going to create snowfall opportunities, of course, especially when you consider that we have this southern jet really, really amplified and moving into the east. I mean, you could, I, don't, I didn't even have to draw that line. I mean, you can see it on screen. You can see the moisture being fed into the eastern states, and this is certainly going to cause more chances at snowfall when combined with that cold air, of course. Uh, this is the end of the model run, and we still have cold air parked mostly over this area, and we have another storm that looks to get involved here down the road. Now, keep in mind, the specifics aren't that important, like location of storms, exact timing of storms. The more important thing is that there is storms and there is cold air and we're really going to down the road need to see if those two come together and create those storms or not. That's what I cannot tell you for sure at this point of course or not even for the next few days but once we're within a week, once we're within five days of this all happening, we'll know a lot more about the potential that we're dealing with. We have the two puzzle pieces but are they going to be put together is the big question mark and that is what time will have to tell. Now, total precipitation, we already went kind of over it, but we see tons out west, of course, and for the south. Uh, really, this precipitation here is all we're going to be seeing until about the 10th. And then after the 10th through the 15th is really when we begin to see uh, a lot of this come into play for the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and the Northeast. Now, total snowfall on the European model, again, this is only through the 13th. We do start to get some for the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and even a little bit here for the Northeast, as you can see. Tons out West, of course. That's no surprise at all. We took a look at that earlier. Uh, and as we move into the GFS model, which gets us through the 19th, the biggest difference here isn't out west. It actually looks pretty identical, no surprise there. But I want to draw your attention eastward because we have a lot of snowfall here from the upper Midwest, a lot of the plains, through the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, Mid-Atlantic, and the Northeast, beginning to play a part in the upcoming weather after that 10th time frame. As I've been kind of hammering home with you guys for a few days now, this is the area that we don't expect activity until the 10th, but from the 10th through the 20th, at least through the 20th, we don't know if it's going to extend after or not, but we do expect to see activity prevailing after that time frame. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that temperature pattern and you really can tell that a lot of the upper air cold air is going to be located over uh, the west and we have a ton of warmth here for the central and eastern states in the upper air. Again, this is not at the surface, this is a bit above the surface, a few thousand feet up and really that air is going to be what sinks to the surface but this is the this is the source of our cold air so this is why it's such a great uh, resource for us to use and we see that right around the 11th 12th time frame what we're seeing happening is warmth starting to build in for the west coast and then we're seeing this cold air want to spread eastward just as i've been talking about throughout this entire video by the time we're taking a look at about the 13th 14th what we see is a full-blown cold air mass over the east once again so this is exactly in line with what we've been expecting surging warmth out west we call this a positive 
PNA, and that's a huge factor. And then the cold air gets redirected into the east. So that is definitely the pattern that we expect. And also what the National Weather Service expects after that, let's say 12th, 13th time frame for sure, but really after the 10th is when that big change begins. And it really stays this way all the way through at least the 18th here at the end of this model run here. We still have plenty of cold air to work with over the eastern states, and we still have that warmth over the west, which is going to continue to redirect the cold into the east, as I mentioned. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe as we do upload weather videos every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.